Streaming live across the country, tackling the topics everyone is talking about online. Share, engage, and interact. This is News Feed Now. Good Tuesday morning, everybody. So glad you can join us on Newsfeed Now. I'm Suzanne Bruner. Marco continues to fade away, but all eyes are now on Hurricane Laura, which will significantly impact Texas and Louisiana. We do have team coverage right now. Let's get straight to it and start with meteorologist Chris Cozart. He joins us live in Lafayette, Louisiana. Chris, when can we expect Laura to make landfall and how strong do you think it's expected to be? Well, the latest uh, forecast from the National Hurricane Center has come in. That was at 10 a.m. Central Time, and they have a major Category 3 hurricane making landfall in the very early morning hours of Thursday. I think it actually has the possibility of becoming a strong Category 3 to weak Category 4 hurricane. I'll show you why here in just a bit. There's a look at the enhanced satellite at Laura now getting off of Cuba and in those open waters of the Gulf of Mexico, which are extremely warm, and the wind shear that made Marco fizzle out, it is no longer there. So it has ripe conditions for intensification, and we've seen that this morning. It went from 65 mile per hour winds to 75 mile per hour winds, and the visible satellite like you're shooting a camera from space down onto the storm. You can easily see all those convective bands now swirling and tightening up in the center of rotation, really getting a textbook look of a tropical system now as it's looking more and more impressive and ominous here on the visible satellite. So here's that National Hurricane Center forecast. Winds now 75 miles per hour. Recon was out there earlier, and they're going to be doing a lot of recon and reconnaissance uh, plane missions through this uh, system over the next uh, 36 hours. But they they were finding wind speeds at 87 miles per hour already. Movements at west northwest at 16 miles per hour. Pressure has fallen down to 990 millibars. When you start to see the pressure fall quickly, that means the system is intensifying and strengthening. And as you see, the further northwest we're heading, we are going to see this strengthen further and further, eventually becoming a category three hurricane. Now, the latest one that just came in, the 10 a.m. update again from the National Hurricane Center, has this category three reaching category three strength with wind speeds at 115 miles per hour offshore well offshore of Texas and Louisiana and there is plenty of time for this to briefly reach category four strength as it makes landfall somewhere right between the state lines of Louisiana and Texas I think it will be a little further west of this but the early morning hours of Thursday. I know I just went over a lot there. Do you, do we have any questions before we go forward with more impacts yeah, here? Yeah, no, no, no. That's a lot of information, a lot of good information we need to know. Um, with that being said, you said that it, a potential of category three and the lower part of the four range here. What do you expect will be the biggest threat for Texas and Louisiana? So for Louisiana, and that's our viewing area. I'm right here in Lafayette at the KLFY studios. It will be coastal storm surge. We are looking at storm surge that could stretch all the way into southeast Texas that uh, approaches 10 to 15 feet. So a wow. life threatening storm surge is going to be a, a really concern with this system, but also this, the winds within this storm. We are looking at wind speeds, uh, I think within at least uh, 50 miles east of the center within that uh, area. We're looking at wind speeds that could top out around 100 to 145 miles per hour before we're all said and done with this. That, that's quite a bit. I've been reading some information on this too. Up to eight inches of rainfall predicted. Has that changed? That has not changed. Fortunately, now, Laura will be a fast-moving system, so the, the rainfall totals aren't necessarily going to be extreme as what we saw with Harvey. Harvey just sat over Houston. We had those really ridiculously high rainfall totals. Uh, this system will be moving through quickly, so 7 to 12 inches of rainfall from a tropical system, that's pretty typical and nothing that's uh, that so extreme that would cause any widespread flash flooding, but there will be flooding issues. There's your Category 3 hurricane. It, it tops out at one. 30. Again, with it being offshore and still having some time and some warm waters to work with, I think we could get into that Category 4 strength there. And so we have hurricane warnings now posted for counties across southeast Texas and for the parishes here in western uh, Louisiana. That does not include Lafayette at this time, but that does include Acadia and points westward from there. Hurricane warnings now in effect and tropical storm warnings, the areas that are shaded in the orange, these are until further notice. 
Okay, and, and I want to just reiterate this real quick. Um, we remember that devastating effects of the Hurricane Harvey in Houston that we saw about three years ago. So could Laura potentially pack the same punch? Not with the rainfall. I don't. We we must make that clear. Rainfall okay. is not going to be an issue like Harvey. Harvey had easily over 30 to 50 inches of rainfall associated with that. This system will not be producing those type of rainfall totals, as it will be a quick moving system. Harvey sat over Houston for about 48 to 72 hours. This will be kicking through the area of 12 hours and the GFS model does a pretty nice job showing that and really showing the intensification of this storm before making landfall. That's Thursday morning at 915. So already making landfall just again west of that state line of Louisiana and Texas. So across the really much of Louisiana, that life threatening storm surge, we're going to deal with inland flooding and also that tornadic threat and damaging winds within our vicinity here in southwest Louisiana. But really the main concern for those catastrophic winds will be right there in that center of rotation and just about 50 miles east of that center. All right, Chris, thanks so much for elaborating um, on that for us. And of course, we're going to keep our eyes on this as uh, Hurricane Laura continues to move its way up the coast here. Uh, while Laura continues to churn in the Gulf of Mexico, thousands on the Gulf Coast are preparing for the hurricane. Right now, let's check in with Dana Winter, who is in Lake Charles, Louisiana this morning. Dana, good to see you. Uh, tell us, uh, you know, we actually just learned that um, there's some evacuation orders that came down within the last hour or so. What do we know about that right now? So we actually just spoke to a one family who came here and they said they are more worried about their cows in their house. And so they're actually evacuating their cows out of Lake Charles today, making sure they get somewhere safe. People too, though, they are evacuating here. Uh, the, Lake Charles is still voluntary evacuations. Uh, th this is not included in that particular order. Although I will say I just actually got an alert here on my phone from the National Weather Service uh, sending out. I think it's actually sending one out again right now as we're speaking. It's a uh, for storm surge and also a hurricane warning in effect. It's actually buzzing right here on my phone. I'm going to step out of the way so you all can see the conditions behind me. It's gorgeous here in Lake Charles. The water is just nice and smooth, a nice, easy breeze here in the air. Uh, Lake Charles did uh, their city hall did publish on Facebook about an hour ago saying the city of Lake Charles transit system operating today is going until eight o'clock tonight. Uh, people who want to take advantage of the service uh, should go to any city of Lake Charles bus stops during the times. So these buses are going to be taking people to the Burton Coliseum here. And once people get to that site, they'll be placed on a bus provided by the state of Louisiana and they'll be taken to a shelter either in Alexandria or in another safe location administered by the state. And so that's uh, pretty much what people are doing right now. A lot of people making plans to get out of here. But again, we're told Lake Charles is not included in Cameron Parish. So still those voluntary evacuations. But early Earlier, the mayor of Lake Charles did put on Facebook saying if you live in a low lie low lying area, he suggests you uh, evacuate. If you live in an area and you're not comfortable living without power, water or wastewater for possibly several days, he also suggests those people evacuate. Reporting live in Lake Charles, I'm Dana Winter. Back to you. Dana, have you talked to any other folks who said that they were going to go elsewhere beside the, the Coliseum? Um, not really. I mean, just that one family, they said they were going with their cows. They were taking the cows mm -hmm. tonight and they were heading out of town, making sure they get somewhere safe. A couple of other people who I said, they, you know, they kind of, uh, they were like, you're going to ride this one out with us. Uh, a lot of people are planning on actually riding this storm out here. Interesting. Interesting. All right, Dana, thanks so much. And of course, we're going to have um, another update from Lake Charles. We're going to continue our team coverage out there in just a few minutes to see what businesses and response teams are doing. But in the meantime, there are two towns along the Texas Gulf Coast that are are also being evacuated due to the impending threat of Hurricane Laura. Now, authorities have warned if people don't leave, they shouldn't expect emergency crews to help when conditions get worse. Maggie Glenn shows us how folks are bracing for what's next. We've weathered the storm so many times that it, uh, it's national pastime over here now. Galveston locals know the drill when preparing for severe weather, boarding up windows, trimming trees, and deciding whether to hunker down or head out. Well, right now, hunkering at home, but we'll feel it out. There's a lot of time for Laura to, to move over here and to get big and decide what, what uh, 
she wants to do. Matthew Salinger has lived on the coast for years and has one tip to all Texans living along the Gulf. Get, get prepared, get prepared now. Meanwhile, Governor Abbott is making sure the state is prepared for everything, including the spread of coronavirus. He says the National Guard is standing by to help. Uh, they are uh, rostering uh, 860 personnel, helicopters, uh, C-130s, high-profile vehicles, uh, sheltering teams, disinfection teams, as well as mobile testing squads, remembering this key point. And that is, uh, as we are uh, working to uh, perhaps uh, relocate temporarily some people that need to go to shelters, we must be very mindful of the ongoing need to uh, protect against the spread of COVID-19. All right, right now we'd like to bring in uh, Maggie, who's joining us from Galveston, Texas right now. Maggie, thanks for joining us here on Newsfeed Now. You know, I understand Governor Greg Abbott issued a disaster declaration for more than 20 counties in Texas uh, just a few days ago. But while still going through a pandemic, we have to remember we are in one still. Uh, what has he told folks about um, seeking safety from both? Right, it's actually really interesting. We're kind of having to deal with two major disasters at once. Um, he has made it clear that anyone who wanted to evacuate early, um, instead of staying in a shelter place, they have actually set up a place for people to check in in Bear County, who will then be given hotel vouchers. So that's kind of one way they're trying to make sure that people maybe aren't as on top of each other as they usually are in a typical storm like this. Um, but other than that, they're also uh, distributing the National Guard to make sure that other shelters are completely disinfected and that they're handing out hand sanitizer to anyone who may need it. Okay, so they have some of those resources and services available for those residents. Um, what other kinds of precautions is the state taking at this time? We are still kind of waiting. The governor is going to be giving a more uh, a more recent update later this afternoon. His last briefing was on Sunday, and that was ahead of both Marco and Laura. So now that Marco is kind of on the out of the way, and Laura is the kind of bigger concern, and it's becoming a bigger concern for Texas. Um, he's expected to give another briefing this afternoon for a more updated state plan. Got it. Do we understand um, or do we know what we could expect at that next briefing? I would expect he's going to give some updates about what type of federal assistance we could be getting. We already know we're going to be getting some assistance from FEMA. Um, he gave a list of different National Guard personnel and different vehicles that were on standby, mm -hmm. uh, ready to help rescue. So I'm sure he'll be giving an, us an update along with the Texas Division of Emergency Management um, as to just how much personnel has been set aside to help with any rescues that are needed here. All right, Maggie, I see you right there along the coastline. Uh, tell us a little bit about the conditions that, that you're seeing out there right now. Right, we've actually been kind of camped out here for about the past 24 hours. It's been honestly pretty calm, pretty beautiful. I know it sounds so cliche to say, but it's kind of the calm before the storm. There's been people surfing, um, there's been plenty of beachgoers here all day long, but the more and more people we talk to, they say they're just kind of trying to enjoy this last bit of nice weather before they head out, which is what city officials are encouraging everyone to do, is to get out of town now while you still can safely. All right, Maggie, thanks so much again, uh, updating us from Galveston, Texas. We appreciate your time. Now, many along the Louisiana coastline are now sandbagging and preparing for a deadly storm surge. Take a look. I'm grateful that they're here giving out sandbags and I made sure I was the first one here and the first one in the line. As Hurricane Laura nears Louisiana, New Orleans city leaders say they're doing everything in their power to keep the community safe. That includes providing New Orleans residents with sandbags, an initiative they haven't done in years, but plan to keep doing. We've seen a lot of citizens that really want this service, right? And I think we've seen a lot of storm events that have been really um, very intense, right? And they've created a lot more rain and people are really understanding that they can take matters in their own hands and really prevent some potential damage. The sandbags are free and no documentation is required, but there is a limit, four per person. The locations are through Monday Center, Dryads YMCA, Raymond Church, and St. Marie Goretti Church. Palmer encourages the community to volunteer. So the next person that comes, if they're elderly or physically disabled, we can go ahead and load them up so they don't have to get out of their car. Residents say initiatives like this 
is send a strong message to the community. There's uh, individuals who are actually willing to help you if you need help. All right, right now we would like to uh, continue our team coverage. We want to go back to the Lake Charles area where Marky Martin is joining us right now. Uh, Marky, thanks again for joining us on Newsfeed Now. Uh, you know, we spoke with somebody out there already uh, telling us what she is seeing out there in terms of uh, talking to residents. But have you have you seen anybody? What, what are their plans? What are they doing mm -hmm. to prepare? And what are businesses doing as well? Hi, Suzanne. It's, it's good to join you here from Lake Charles. In terms of talking to residents, I've been here boots on the ground for about 24 hours. It really is a mixed bag of locals here. Some of them say, you know, we've been here a thousand times. We no no chance that we're sticking around for this, right? They've, they've geared up for this. They've already headed out. They've made their evacuation plans far in advance. And then you have some people who live here who say, you know, we've been here before, but we want to stick around, protect our property, our belongings, our family, and we're not going to move until we really think that our lives are in danger. Mm -hmm. So um, it just kind of depends on who you're talking to. Driving around this morning, I can tell you lots of businesses, churches boarded up here and uh, those shops and, and, and those people taking precautions just in case the storm does get bad. Again, Lake Charles in the direct path of what has now become Hurricane Laura, expecting landfall between, it sounds like, tomorrow night and possibly Thursday morning. And, uh, you know, lots of people here just right outside my live shot at the park this morning still enjoying the day. As you can see behind me, uh, it, it's a beautiful day. It's, it's very different than this time yesterday, I will tell you the clouds are a bit more ominous. Uh, they're a bit heavier. They're a bit stormier. The water's a bit choppier this morning. And locals here say if you've lived here for a long time, you can just feel it in the air when things are changing. I grew up in Oklahoma, similar to when a tornado's about to strike. Uh, the sky changes color. Uh, the air gets thicker. You can just feel it coming. So that's what locals are telling mm -hmm. me here, Suzanne. Yeah, Marky, sounds like you've been out there for, for quite a bit. Um, Anytime a weather event like this happens, you know, we see crews from all over post up. They're ready to tackle any issue that that area will potentially face. Have you seen or know of any response teams on standby? Mm -hmm. Um, actually, I have not seen any response teams on standby, but I can tell you this. On Friday, the Louisiana governor declared a state of emergency just in anticipation of this. Uh, and yesterday, the governor also took to the lectern saying, hey, you have to be prepared. Uh, we do know emergency shelters are already being mm -hmm. uh, equipped with the necessities because now it's, um, y you know, there's three things to worry about. It's not just the storms, but it it's Marco, it's Laura, and now it's also COVID. So for families with immunocompromised, Compromised family members, those crowded emergency shelters, those are just not an option right now. So a lot of people having to think far in advance. But as far as being on the water or on the roadways, really the only thing we're seeing is, is people uh, heading out. The inland highways, the inland roads, a lot mm -hmm. more heavily trafficked than, than the, the roads headed toward the water. Um, I've been here for 24 hours. That will probably change today in terms of seeing crews. But as of now, that's what I've noticed, Suzanne. Yeah, you know, Mark, you bring up a good point about COVID-19. Um, yes, it's, you know, you can imagine how mm -hmm. that's going to impact shelters and such. I want to bring up Red Cross volunteers. You know, they in some areas they're lacking volunteers and they're urging people uh, to sign up and help with any disasters that we could potentially face. I know that there's some uh, battling the wildfires in California, but what are we seeing mm -hmm. out there where you're at? Are, are they seeing a need in volunteers? Is that even an issue? Uh, I know some of our affiliates, some of our sister stations have talked to the American Red Cross and they are equipped for whatever this storm brings. And I know in shelters specifically, uh, Red Cross members say if anybody comes in who needs a place to stay, but they have been exposed to COVID-19 or they're even showing symptoms of COVID-19, those folks will be separated in, in a different area from the other locals who are staying in that shelter. I know they're equipped with masks, hand sanitizer, food, water, uh, the necessities, and they're urging everybody who's listening and does have time to prepare, hey, you know, we're ready, but you also need to think about yourself and your family, and you have to take whatever precautions you need to take to get ready for this. But it's not just Louisiana. You know, we came from Texas yesterday morning. Those coastline cities are doing the exact same thing. So Red Cross really has uh, the southern coast of the United States taken care of, but uh, as far as volunteers, I'm sure they could use all hands they could get. Absolutely, Marky. We appreciate your time uh, joining us live from the Lake Charles area. Thank you.
Of course, we will have the very latest on Hurricane Laura right here on our website. So keep updated right here and we'll keep you updated throughout the day. In the meantime, thanks so much for joining us here on Newsfeed Now. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Same time.